This is a video on the boycott China series. Is COVID-19 a biological weapon used by China? There is now enough proof that Corona was a biological attack on US and other industrial countries. The level of attack is unprecedented in its reach, viciousness and number of lives lost. It also provided huge economic gain for China. Is it not strange that the non-industrial countries were the least affected? Was this a virus that hit countries after looking at their GDP? Watch the video till the end to understand how and why China attacked the world and you will have no more doubt about it. There is sufficient proof that China had the virus to spread globally and even try to profit from it. Let's start with what is COVID-19 and when did it strike? COVID-19 is a strain of coronavirus which causes illness ranging from common cold to severe acute respiratory syndrome. The virus mainly spreads between people through close contact and via respiratory droplets produced from coughs or sneezes. When did it strike and what is the timeline? The information of seven infected patients became public in China as early as 30 December 2019. There is a great chance the people who were infected did not even know about it. On 4 January 2020, WHO tweeted a cluster of cases of pneumonia cases with no deaths have been reported. On 9th January 2020, a 61-year-old man passes away in Wuhan, but the news was not made public until 11th January. 14 Jan 2020, WHO tweeted that early investigation shows no evidence of human-to-human -human transmission. 20 Jan 2020, Corona was finally acknowledged by China on 20 Jan, just five days before Chinese New Year, which was due on 25th January 2020. Now, Chinese New Year is the biggest migration event on Earth. Many people travel to China to experience it. By 24 Jan 2020, many people have already left Wuhan to travel to other parts of China and US. On 31st Jan 2020, America was among the first countries in the world to announce cancellation of flights to China. When Trump announced this, he was hit with, you might not believe it, but he was hit with such travel restrictions will hinder coronavirus response. And there were many comments like this. But the problem was, at least 430,000 people had already traveled to US on direct flights from China, including almost 4,000 Americans who were allowed into US from China after the official suspension of flights announced on 31st January 2020. The possibility of asymptomatic carriers of the virus was not understood during this period. On 4th Feb, 2020, the government of India banned all India-bound airlines from boarding any passengers from China and cancelled all existing Indian visas. 6 February 2020, first corona death in US was that of Patricia Dowd, resident of San Jose. There could have been many deaths before January 2020 and went undetected because the bodies were never tested for COVID-19. By August 2020, the virus had claimed more than 181,000 American lives and 840,000 lives worldwide. Did China know about the virus before 20 January 2020? Yes, China knew about this virus much earlier. China has officially acknowledged the virus only on 20th January 2020. But did China know about it? Of course, China knew that the virus in Wuhan was SARS coronavirus because the words SARS coronavirus was written on the file of a patient who came to the eye doctor, Dr. Lee, on 30th December 2019. Dr. Lee, the whistleblower in this case, quickly messaged his friends about the virus and by the evening had confirmed seven cases in Wuhan hospital and asked his friends to stay safe and take precautions. If an eye doctor can pick up the virus on 30th December, then why couldn't the Chinese medical authority pick it up before that? It was only because Dr. Lee's message became public and because of that, WHO came to know about it. Therefore, in COVID-19 case, there is no date on records mentioned earlier than 30th December 2019. If seven patients came to Wuhan for treatment, there is a possibility that an equal number of patients never bothered to visit a doctor due to various reasons or there is a chance in such serious illnesses that the people could have died before meeting a doctor. This is because in the early stages of an epidemic, the lethality of the virus is always high. Even if we consider just the seven cases, then they would have infected at least 21 to 70 people within a couple of days around their house, workplace or during the travel by a bus or train. Most probably the patient himself did not know about the virus and he spread it to others unknowingly. When Dr. Lee's news became public, China had no option but to report to WHO on 4th January mentioning a few pneumonia cases, few, not many, few pneumonia cases. According to the Chinese, there were just a few pneumonia cases. Now, please note that this is no ordinary country. China already knows how deadly SARS virus is. So then why didn't they take any quick action and why did China delay informing WHO and the public? Chinese medical authorities had already diagnosed this as SARS coronavirus on 30th December 2019 and they had it on the patient's case paper. From the time the patient catches flu-like symptoms and decides to go to the doctor and the doctor gives him the usual flu prescriptions and when that doesn't work the doctor gives him antibiotics and only when it becomes clear that the antibiotics are not working could more tests be involved. The number of days lost in this process could at least be 15 days. So it can be safe to say that these seven cases came to Wuhan hospital initially around 15 December 2019. So these seven people kept infecting other people near their houses and the place of work for a full whole month until China announced on 14 January that it was SARS coronavirus. 
Even after confirming unexplained pneumonia on 14 Jan to WHO, China plays down the gravity of the situation by claiming that there are no cases of human to human transmission. China waits another six days to confirm on 20th January 2019 that the virus is indeed SARS coronavirus. But what is surprising is that the whole genome was sequenced by scientists of the Shanghai Public Health Clinical Center on 5th January itself and posted on an open access website virological.org on 11th January 2020 and later deposited on the GeneBank website on 12th January 2020. This proves that China already had this information on 12th of Jan if not on the 5th of Jan. Then why did China wait another 8 days to disclose it? It is reported that scientist Yongzhen Jiang's team had identified the virus as early as 5th January to be as deadly as SARS. But what is really shocking is that the laboratory at the Shanghai Public Health Clinical Center was ordered closed on 12th Jan temporarily for a scrutiny. What did China want to scrutinize or check in that laboratory? If at all they had to scrutinize, then they had to scrutinize from where the virus had leaked, which was Wuhan lab. So instead of scrutinizing Wuhan lab, they closed down Shanghai lab for scrutiny. Wow. But the close down of the Shanghai lab is proof that the Chinese medical authorities got all the required evidence on 12th itself, but had the audacity to claim on 14 Jan 2022 WHO that there is no proof of human to human transmission. The purpose of China's delay was to wait for the Chinese New Year to begin. This will be the right time for the foreign tourists to come into China and then get infected. This time period will also allow for those infected Chinese to travel out of China to infect other people in other countries like US, UK, Italy, Germany, Russia, etc. But Dr. Lee put a spanner in the CCP Chinese plan by calling out the virus almost a month earlier. When cancellation of flights to China was announced by America, China threatened to retaliate. But this early call to stop flights to China saved many American lives. Only after US had taken this bold decision did other countries stop their flights to China. The world has to acknowledge that the quick action by Trump also saved the life of people in other countries. How many countries were affected and which were the top affected countries? Why does this list look like the list of the top GDP countries? The countries which were most affected by the virus had a very high level of industrial production capacity. These countries were intentionally targeted by China so that their production falls and China could fulfill the demand of these countries. The lockdown has dealt a huge blow to all manufacturing countries and many companies might not even make it back to business. All of this has worked in favor of China. If Indian, American, German, Italian, Brazilian, Mexican companies close down, who profits? Only China stands to gain from companies closing down all over the world. While other countries went into lockdown for many months, China went into lockdown for only a few days. How is this even possible? If you see the total number of deaths in each country, China where the virus had started has just 4,634 deaths and is not even in the top 25 countries with corona death in spite of having the highest number of population in the world. How is that even possible? Does China have some superpower? The chances of something like this happening is very very low. Is it a mere coincidence that the country which lost the most lives is America, which China considers its biggest enemy? US has a population of just 331 million but had lost 181,000 lives, while China with a population of 1,439 million had just 4,600 deaths in spite of the virus starting out in China. Is this lopsided death coincidental? Not at all, China with all its pretense of a friend is at war with America. China took away American companies to China by offering low cost and bigger local market. As companies started to move to China, unemployment in US started to rise. China had laid this trap to lure American companies to China by opening up its economy with conditions and setting up the one country, two systems with mainland China and Hong Kong in the year 1997. As far as job loss is concerned, almost all countries in the world were hit. But of all the countries in the world, the worst hit are India and US. India lost around 120 million jobs and US lost around 20 million jobs. Although the numbers look very different, the job loss in comparison to their population is almost similar. After a few days of lockdown in Wuhan, China's economy goes back to normal and becomes the first major economy to grow since the pandemic. Which country benefits most when so many countries go into lockdown? Does US benefit from this? Does Germany benefit from this? Or does Japan benefit from this? Or does China benefit from this? There is no other country in the world that can cater to the demand of so many countries other than China. Only China can produce for all the countries that have gone into lockdown. With almost all industrial countries in lockdown and since China has already started its manufacturing units, export industry representatives feel that China will take over the market if manufacturing doesn't resume soon. Here also you will find that China has made great inroads into markets around the world. Has Chinese military spoken about targeting US with biological weapons? Yes, China believes that its biggest enemy is United States. China believes that it needs land and resources for its citizens. China believes that in many regional conflict with any of its neighbor, 
in the process of capturing land, then it will have to deal with the United States. So China cannot capture any neighboring land without dealing with the United States. China always believed that to capture other countries, it has to make America weak first and then destroy it with biological weapons. China believes that if US was attacked with nuclear weapons, then it could retaliate and nuke China and there would be more loss of Chinese lives. So the Chinese plan was to pretend to be a friend of US and open its market to US and lure American companies to move to China and shut its plants in US. This made America financially weak and unstable over two decades. During this period from 2001 after the Twin Tower attacks to 2020 while US was busy waging a war in Middle East, China was busy destroying American companies in US right under their very nose. The plan to destroy America with its own open market policy was hatched way back in 1992 after the fall of Soviet Union. China realized that the fall of Soviet Union was brought about by the US and its fate too will be sealed if US is not destroyed. This plan was explained by the Chinese defense general Xi Haoshan. I have made a video on Xi's speech, the link of which you can find in the description. Xi explained how the Chinese will first open its economy with one country, two systems to lure and trap American investments in Hong Kong and force American companies to invest in R&D centers in China. Xi said that China will also allow Chinese people to go out of China to US and other countries to spy not just military but also commercial technology. This will ensure that America will become weak financially and China will become prosperous. China was supposed to do all this while wearing the mask of a peace-loving and trade-friendly country as explained by Deng Xiaoping. Another big goal of Chinese Communist Party was to break US out of the different world organizations and isolating it. Once US is isolated, then China had to launch a sudden biological attack on US and aim to kill around 2 million Americans. China has achieved all these goals. China took the lives of almost 200,000 Americans with COVID-19, which is just 10% of the lethality of the kind of attack it had in mind. Even by this attack, the Americans have almost surrendered. Had it not been for Dr. Lee, who risked his life to tell people on 30th December 2019 about sars coronavirus, then China could have been more successful in its mission of hitting 2 million lives in America. If COVID-19 was detected after the Chinese New Year, it would have been catastrophic and wiped out almost 25% of the world's population. Does China have the ability to launch weaponized biological agents? Yes. In 1995, President Bill Clinton transmitted to the US Congress his report on China, which said China maintains its offensive bioweapon program that US believes that despite being a member of the Biological Weapons Convention, China maintains a biological weapons program in violation of its Biological Weapons Convention obligations. In its Chemical and Biological Defense Program Annual Report of 2001, the US Department of Defense was even more specific contending China possesses the mutation production capabilities necessary to develop, produce and weaponize biological agents. Here they were thinking of launching bioweapons by missiles, but what they didn't imagine in their wildest dreams that the CCP government of China will infect Chinese traveling to other countries and even tourists visiting China. In this way, the missiles were not necessary and there is a very low chance of being detected that China had launched this attack. Francis Boyle finds the smoking gun. Francis Boyle is a person who drafted the Biological Weapons Anti-Terrorism Act of 1989 for US and it was approved unanimously and signed into law by President George H.W. Bush, the father of George W. Bush. He has reported that the smoking gun has been found at Wuhan lab because an antiviral research study had published a report which did a genetic analysis of the Wuhan coronavirus and the paper said that the Wuhan virus had a gain of function for efficient spreading in human population compared to other viruses. This is used only for offensive biological warfare activity and this needs a BSL-4 safety lab and Wuhan is the only BSL-4 facility in China. Gain of function is a process of genetically engineering a virus to become more lethal than its original state. According to him, coronavirus is a gain of function of the SARS virus. If SARS was 10% lethal, then coronavirus is engineered to be 18% lethal. Why was China increasing the lethality of SARS virus? The only purpose of such an action is to use it as a weapon. There's no other use for increasing the lethality of a virus. I think I found the uh, smoking gun here. Uh, there was a uh, recent scientific study uh, published in Antiviral Research, 10 February 2020 by three scientists from France and one from Montreal who did a uh, genetic analysis of the uh, Wuhan coronavirus and they said, quote, it may provide a gain of function of the 219 coronavirus for efficient spreading in the human population compared to other viruses. Let me repeat that. May provide for efficient spreading in the human population compared to other viruses. Let me repeat that. May provide a gain of function to the 2019 coronavirus for efficient spreading in the human population 
compared to other uh, lineage coronaviruses. They, what that, that's uh, the smoking gun for a uh, biologic, offensive biological warfare uh, agent. Gain of function uh, properties uh, is uh, a tip off. It's only useful for uh, offensive biological warfare uh, uh, activity. Uh, and it is typically conducted in either a, uh, it's so dangerous, in either a BSL-4 or a BSL-3 facility. And there in Wuhan, you have the only uh, BSL-4 facility in uh, China. So I, I think it's clear uh, it, it came out of uh, this lab. Gain of function, uh, it uh, means it's DNA genetically engineered. Uh, to be more lethal and more uh, effect, uh, uh, more infectious at that Wuhan BSL-4 facility. They were working on a, uh, a biological warfare uh, weapon involving uh, SARS, which, as I said, is a um, coronavirus to begin with. Uh, Winnipeg is uh, Canada's equivalent of our own uh, Fort Detrick. It's a BSL-4 facility, and yes, uh, they research, develop, develop test, uh, manufacture, stockpile every type of hideous uh, biological warfare weapon that we know of. So some of this technology could have been uh, stolen from Winnipeg. Uh, the Wuhan BSL-4 was, was already working on this to begin with. They had already developed SARS. SARS had, uh, and it seems that they were uh, uh, turbocharging uh, SARS, which that, that's what this looks uh, to be the case. This is a brand new uh, generation of um, uh, biowarfare uh, weapons uh, we haven't seen before. Uh, its lethality goes from uh, 15%, uh, as estimated by Lancet, up to uh, 17 to 18% by a, uh, a British health official and even Chinese uh, statistics. Its infectivity is 83%. Uh, it can affect uh, maybe uh, three to four people for every every person uh, infected. It has gain of function properties, which means it it travels through air uh, at least six or uh, seven feet. Uh, and it does appear now there are reports that even uh, contaminated human feces uh, give it off. That it, the human feces radiate off maybe six or seven feet. So we've, we've never seen anything like this before uh, in, in the history of biological warfare, at least. Can a virus escape from a BSL-4 lab? Yes, but in this case, the probability is so low that the answer is no. First, Wuhan seafood market is not near the Wuhan lab, but it is 13 kilometers or half an hour's drive away across the Yangtze River. There is no way that a virus can reach so far without infecting the carrier or any other person on the way. Even if we consider that the virus was picked up by an animal from the lab, then the person from the lab who handled the animal would have been infected too. And this would have been noticed by the scientists at the lab. There is no way that an animal in the seafood market could have got infected by a person from Wuhan lab without himself getting infected. Second, there have been cases of virus escaping labs with lower level of safety. But this lab has the highest level of safety irrespective of the reports about the people not being qualified to maintain it. Third, if the virus did escape, then the person carrying such a high viral load would have been infected straight away. So the person from the Wuhan lab should have died first. Somebody in the building or some worker near the building would have been infected first. Even if we consider the scenario that the virus had escaped, then they would have conducted some damage control and the people in Chinese government would have been informed. Fourth, if indeed Wuhan seafood market was the first place of infection, then it is only possible that China carried out human trials to test its effect on a few people from the Wuhan animal market. 5. There are more chances of the virus coming out of the lab than the virus coming from the animal market. The virus could have indeed originated from the lab accidentally or intentionally and the Wuhan seafood market was just a lame excuse. The first prominent personality to come out publicly and support this theory was the US Senator Tom Cotton who appeared on Fox News. He said, we know it didn't originate at the Wuhan seafood market. Based on the study of Chinese scientists and US needs to be open to all possibilities including a lab accident. So it can be seen that the virus reached the people according to the Chinese government's plan. Was there a delay in informing WHO? Yes, indeed. Chinese authorities knew about the SARS coronavirus in Wuhan and did not inform anybody, not even the local population. It seems to have been a top secret. 
by informing the people dr lee did the work which the chinese government should have done but because of this action he was punished and had to apologize for it why the chinese authorities did not inform the population all the chinese information about covid-19 starts from the date of 30 december 2019 the day dr lee made this news public the associated press has found that china created significant delays which created considerable frustration among who officials over not getting the information they needed to fight the spread of the deadly virus according to cnbc china in fact delayed releasing the genetic map or genome of the virus for more than a week after three or four different labs had fully decoded the information on 27 december vision medicals had pieced together most of the genome of the new coronavirus with a striking similarity to sars on 2nd jan dr shi of wuhan institute of virology had decoded the entire genome of the virus according to a notice later posted on the institute's website on 3rd jan the chinese cdc had independently sequenced the virus according to the internal data seen by the associated press on 5th jan a designated government lab the chinese academy of medical science had decoded the sequence and submitted a report and then there is a case of shanghai public health clinical center which had decoded the genome and was closed down for temporary purpose all these laboratories have shown that it was as serious as sars then why did china wait for two more weeks to provide who with the detailed data on patient and cases it is very obvious that china was waiting for corona to spread in the world and allow the virus to start its incubation period china lied to who stating that the virus did not spread by human to human transmission and who tweeted this message to the world this is the biggest proof that china was lying Another circumstantial evidence is that more than one Chinese scientist has been caught stealing live viruses from labs. In the year 2019, there has been a strange spike in Chinese interest in Ebola, Nipah, Marburg, Machpo, Junin, Rift Valley fever, Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever and Hendra viruses. Viruses which were genetically engineered to have a gain of function and thus very lethal were stolen from Canada and sent to China. The Chinese staff at the Canadian Microbiology Laboratory were kicked out from the lab after they were caught spying and stealing viruses from the Canadian lab to guess where? Wuhan. One of these scientists were Zhang Yiwu Q. On 5th July 2019, officials at the National Microbiology Laboratory (NML) in Winnipeg, Canada, revoked the access of Zhang Yiwu Q and a team which included her husband and biologist Kading Cheng and an unknown number of Chinese students who she had brought from China. No lab in the world will revoke the access rights of any prominent research scientist for any minor lapses. But in this case, the whole team was kicked out. The reason would have been very compelling because Q was no ordinary scientist and she was one of the best. Zhang Yiwu Q's work included a variety of Ebola and wild strain. Among them were the most virulent, which had a 80% lethality rate. One of the procedures conducted by the team was the infection of monkeys via the airways. Zhang Yiwu Q was a well-known, respected, and an extraordinary scientist who had helped develop a treatment for Ebola virus. But if NML had to kick them out, then there had to be a very good reason, and the reason was that she had secretly and illegally shipped two exceptionally virulent viruses, Ebola and Nipah viruses, from NML lab to China. Other than that, Q had made at least five trips in just one academic year from 2017 to 2018 from US to the Wuhan laboratory. That is a very busy schedule. In December 2019, Chinese national Zhang Zhen was arrested at Boston Logan International Airport while traveling with 21 vials of biological samples in his bag. His wife Wang Ji Zhu is also working in the health-related field. By mid-Jan 2020, almost 4,000 people had already entered U.S. directly from Wuhan, as per Veriflight, an aviation data company based in China. Other than that, at least 430,000 people had arrived in U.S. on direct flights from China. China was waiting for the infected Chinese to enter U.S. before releasing information that the virus could spread from human to human. During this time, China was spreading the disease to other countries by coughing and spitting on elevators, subways, and malls. Even during this short span of a few months, there have been many security video footages of Chinese spitting and coughing on places where people touch. Here you can see a Chinese man on the subway.
there are many instances of Chinese people trying to infect other people. The modus operandi seems to be sneeze or cough on elevator buttons or door handles. One lady was seen carrying a bottle of liquid. Majority of the spitting army seems to be women. Note that these videos were captured in just 4 months from January to April and they seem to be spreading the virus in China so as to show that China too is a victim of COVID-19. This seems to be a very low cost method to spread the virus. This doesn't mean that all the Chinese people are like that. The truth is a very large part of the Chinese people are not like that at all. They don't like the CCP government and have tried to oppose it in the past. They have regularly escaped to other countries like US and Australia and tried their best to warn others about the activities of CCP government in China. They have stood against China very bravely. Okay, doctor, what did the Chinese lie about that you can prove? Okay, first, as I mentioned in the video in Fox, uh, our government already knows that before the end of December, there are over 40 people get infected, but not, as they mentioned, like 27. And also, most importantly, there were human-to-human -human transmission already at that time. But they keep lying until middle of June, actually 20 June, they admitted. Reason I came to U.S. is because I deliver the message of the truth of COVID-19. If I tell it in Hong Kong, the moment I start to tell it, I will be despaired and killed. No one can hear me. So for this purpose, I would like to go to U.S. and tell the truth of the origins of COVID-19 to the world, to let people understand how terrible how dangerous it is. This is nothing about politics. This is the thing about whether all the human in the world can survive. There are many, many patients who don't get uh, treatment on time and diagnosis on time. There is no protection for both doctors and the patient and uh, common people. And also, uh, the government doesn't allow people to release such information. Hospital doctors are scared, but they cannot talk. CDC staff are scared. I feel very disappointed, but I already know this would happen because I know the corruption among this kind of international organization like WHO to China government, to China Communist Party government. Above everything else, the biggest expose of Chinese intention is that even after China locked down internally, it allowed foreigners and also its own people to travel out of China. China encouraged international travel from Chinese cities. Chinese domestic travel was restricted on 9th Feb, but continued to operate significant international traffic until 30th March 2019. It is also possible that the large number of cases in China happened due to cancellation of flights from China. The people who China had infected and were supposed to travel to US or other countries had to stay back and thus the local people got infected. Did China try to destroy genome sequence work, destroy samples and suppress the news? Yes, on 1st Jan 2020, China ordered to stop tests, destroy samples and suppress the news. Once Dr. Li's information became public, maybe CCP panicked. Chinese laboratories had identified a virus as highly infectious new pathogen in December 2019. But they were ordered to stop the testing destroy samples and suppress the news, a Chinese media outlet had revealed. Did China choke US and try to prevent US from using masks? Yes, China prevented US from protecting itself by buying out their mask and PPE. Chinese-owned firms dominate the market for protective gear components not only in US but in the whole world. There is already a huge market for masks in China due to the polluted air. Yet China choked US by buying out all the masks and PPE. In January and February 2020, the total value of protective masks and related items exported from the United States to China increased from $1.4 million in 2019 to about US dollar $17.6 million in 2020. Similarly, the shipment of ventilators and protective garments to China jumped by triple digits. During the period of 35 days between January 24th and February 29th, Chinese customs cleared nearly 2.5 billion pieces of incoming epidemic-related equipment, including over a billion masks and more than 25 million protective suits. On February 24th, just one day alone, Chinese customs cleared import of nearly 43 million face masks to China. Please note that this was barely 13 days after Corona was officially given its name of COVID-19 on 11 Feb by WHO. And by this time, there were nearly 44,653 cases of infection and 1,113 deaths in China. So who were the people who were buying billions of masks and PPE by the millions in China? Even if we consider the situation that there was a shortage of masks in China, it would have been very easy for China to ramp up the production, then get it shipped from as far away as US. The masks are manufactured and packed by machines with very little human intervention. So ramping up the manufacturing would have been the first priority. But numbers show China hoarding masks and cotton from India, expecting the demand in US to increase soon, thus importing the masks and stock them up in warehouses. 
China did this to ensure that there will be a shortage of masks worldwide, but especially in US when the corona attack increases. By 19th March 2020, China reported zero local infection. But by the end of March, US started to experience the shortage of masks and PPE. The shortage had forced hospitals, nursing homes, and first responders to ration masks and other protective gear as they treated infected and high risk patients, creating a secondary health crisis among the first line healthcare providers. This was like fighting a war with no ammunition. What did China do with the American masks, PPE and ventilators stocked in their warehouses? Did China ship this back to the US at a price many times higher? Circumstantial evidence shows that China did in fact sell these items back to US at a much higher price. The US federal government's strategic national stockpile had nearly emptied and states had been left to find PPE supplies on their own. By April 2020, the surge in demand had left importers, suppliers and purchasers scrambling. According to Michael Einhorn, CEO and President of DealMed, a PP distributor based in New York who buys his supplies from China DealMed, the cost kept rising and rising and rising, and there seemed no end in sight. The cost of PP supplies had gone up by more than 1000%, according to a report published by the Society for Healthcare Organization Procurement Professional. Will China shop at this? No, China has seen how destabilizing the virus was to almost all countries and how cheap it was to export it. China's enemy number one, US, was the worst hit. Based on the speech of China's defense general, Qi Haoshan, China will only step up its biological warfare. The modus operandi of Chinese bio war seems to be that China first infects its own citizens who are in close proximity to foreign visitors in China. This could be tourist guides or sellers in various markets of tourist interest. The only possible way to avoid this biological risk is to permanently close all allied flights and ships to China and stop all trade with China. Any other method would only allow China to benefit from it. Is there any other means to stop China? Can US stop China? The answer is no, it is too late and US is already in decline and slipping. Right now, it looks like China will have its victory over US. If China's rail and road belt and road project succeeds, then the European countries too could join China to attack US. American and the world's dependence upon China to supply a lot of products put China in a commanding position. America cannot boycott any Chinese product because China will also retaliate in a similar way. So in essence, the US is powerless against China unless it attacks China with military power. Right now, military power is the only power that US has over China and its usage will be a huge loss for both countries. In the future, there are possibilities that China could export different viruses on the world and take advantage of the trade situation to supply products to affected countries and in the guise of building their infrastructure, easily take over the countries. Due to this reason, China must not be given a second chance to set another round of virus upon the world. An US defense official told CNN that we are paying close attention to any indicators that China is leveraging COVID-19 to take advantage of a situation where defense companies need capital more than ever. China has already implemented its rail and road projects across Europe, Asia, Africa and Oceania. It will touch more than 60% of the world's population, 40% of the world trade and 35% of the global economy. China will be the biggest beneficiary of this project, yet its cost has to be borne by the countries. There might never be a second chance. So when you go through all the points, it becomes very clear that China had this plan of launching its biological warfare against America since four decades. And this is the very reason China has to be boycotted by all the countries in the world and isolated so that it goes back to its old origin.